Money! Arguably the most important social construct to ever exist. The thing that makes the world go round. But how did money first come about? What are its origins? Spoiler alert, what you are probably told about the origins of money is completely wrong. Watch until the end of this short video to see the actual truth. But first, what is money actually? Money is a social unit of measurement. If you go to a store and ask what something is worth, they won't tell you in terms of chickens, but rather the local currency that your region uses, such as dollars. People have used all sorts of money throughout history. Tally sticks, clay tokens, seashells, whale's teeth, gold coins, rocks, or digital blips on a screen. What we call money is a socially constructed accounting tool. In other words, it is not a commodity or a concrete thing at all. You can no more touch a dollar or a British pound than you can touch an hour or a cubic centimeter. Units of currency are merely abstract units of measurement, and such abstract systems of accounting emerged long before the use of any particular gold tokens of exchange. Money is used to measure debt. A dollar bill or a coin is effectively an IOU. In this respect, there is no fundamental difference between a silver coin, a dollar coin made of copper nickel alloy designed to look vaguely like gold, a green piece of paper with a picture of George Washington on it, Hello. or a digital blip on some bank's computer. Technically, anybody can create money. The hard part is getting that money accepted. If I tried to buy groceries with Dogecoin, the local grocery store probably wouldn't accept it. In the vast majority of cases throughout history, the money that people use is the currency that is issued and backed by a state, or some sort of governing authority. Usually the tax imposed in that currency is what gives that currency its value, because the tax guarantees a demand for the currency and legitimizes its use. It's not just backed by faith, it's also backed by a little coercion. But how did money actually come about? What are its real origins? Surprisingly, there are very few videos or books that accurately describe the origins of money. And the ones that do exist are filled with fictional tales, with no evidence. The Barter Myth Try imagining life before money. It's pretty hard, isn't it? The conventional story about the origins of money, we are told, is that humans started off with barter for many years. Then we started to use commodity money, such as precious metals, because it was much more easier and convenient. And then we started to use virtual credit money like we do today. This story was first popularized by Adam Smith, father of economics. And the story is constantly still told to this day by introductory orthodox economics textbooks. Even many orthodox economics professors continue to tell the story today without any second thought. This barter story of money is so deeply established in our common sense that most people on earth couldn't imagine any other way that money could possibly have come about. But here's the problem. There is no actual evidence to back this barter story up. Not just insufficient evidence, but literally no evidence. There is no anthropological evidence that any ancient society based an economy on bartering. And there is an enormous amount of evidence suggesting the opposite. Anthropologists pull their hair out every time they hear an orthodox economist tell this mythical story. For centuries now, explorers have been trying to find this mythical land of barter. None with success. The definitive anthropological research on barter by Cambridge professor Caroline Humphrey could not be any more clear in its conclusions. Quote, No example of a barter economy, pure and simple, has ever been described, let alone the emergence from it of money. All available ethnography suggests that there never has been such a thing. For further learning on the history of money, I would highly recommend reading the critically acclaimed book, Debt, The First 5,000 Years, by anthropologist David Graeber, as well as David McNally's book, Blood and Money. These two books inform the insights of this video. Now, none of this is to say that barter itself never existed. It just never took place on the grand scale that people thought it did. There were no economies based on barter. When you think about it, having an economy based on barter doesn't even make sense on a conceptual level. Barter always requires a double coincidence of wants. A barter transaction can only take place if both parties have something that the other party wants or needs and regards in a similar value. Imagine trying to do this for everything you needed. This double coincidence of wants is not easy to find, which is why barter becomes messy very quickly. Let's imagine a scenario where we have Bob the Baker and Ben the Butcher. 
What if Bob needs Ben's meat, but Ben doesn't need Bob's bread? Bob would have to try and find someone who did, trading until he eventually got some meat. This world of barter sounds quite inconvenient, doesn't it? Yeah, that's because it's completely made up. Adam Smith was the first to popularize this mythical story in his book The Wealth of Nations. Adam Smith first got the idea from Aristotle, who himself admitted that his hypothesis was purely speculation. Adam Smith just ran with the assumption and wrote about an imagined world of barter, where societies just exchanged things directly without any kind of money. And money spontaneously arose horizontally with markets. No hard evidence, just pure assumptions. He assumed it to be true because it appealed to people's basic common sense. Stanley Jevons, for example, who in 1871 wrote what has come to be considered the classic book on the origins of money, took his example straight from Adam Smith. Around this time, missionaries, merchants, and adventurers traveled the world, many of them bringing copies of Smith's book with them, expecting to find this land of barter. None of them ever did. They did discover an endless variety of different economic systems, but to this day, no one has been able to locate this imagined world of barter, where the dominant mode of economic transaction takes the form of, I'll give you 30 chickens for that cow. But economists simply ignored this information, and despite consistently finding no evidence, the false barter tale of the origins of money continued to be told, and many still tell it to this day, despite all the new anthropological evidence that has come out since then. And if you think about it, it's not a very big surprise. People believe in all sorts of silly myths. Check out my video on the deficit myth if you haven't already. Okay, now that we know the barter story is a false myth, then what are the actual origins of money? How come there isn't another compelling story about the origins of money that is widely known? The reason why anthropologists haven't been able to come up with a simple, compelling story for the origins of money is because there's no reason to believe that there could be one. Money was no more ever invented than music, mathematics, or writing. What we call money isn't a physical thing that was randomly invented like the light bulb or gunpowder. Money is a way of comparing things as proportions, saying that one of x is equivalent to two of y. Thus, this thing that we call money is probably almost as old as human thought itself. In fact, there is evidence of money existing as far back as writing. The earliest found evidence of writing was actually about money. It was about keeping track of transactions and details of debts. Writing was not invented by poets, it was invented out of the need for accounting. So what are the exact specific origins of money? Well, we don't know and we probably never will know. Nobody just sat down and wrote a memo saying, today I invented money. While money as an accounting tool is older than civilization itself, throughout human history, as far back as we can find evidence for, all forms of accepted money used in organized societies were issued, overseen, and managed by some form of state or local authority, whether it's an arbitrary hierarchy or a democratic hierarchy. Thus, contrary to the false medalist theory of money that money is a commodity that horizontally arises out of a spontaneous barter exchange out of the need to form markets, in reality, money as we know it comes about through some form of state trying to manage economic activity and keep track of debts. What makes money valid is the state backing it and creating value for it via taxation. Another huge misconception is that we started out with commodity money, such as bullion, and later evolved into paper money backed by nothing. After the fabled land of barter, the conventional story we hear is that we had metallic commodity money for most of history, then we had paper money backed by bullion, and then under Richard Nixon we suddenly went off the gold standard. Ever since then, we have been left with virtual fiat money, not backed by any metals. Libertarian gold bugs like to call this fake money. The narrative is basically that money is getting faker and faker, and that virtual money is a new thing. But again, this conventional narrative of monetary history is completely backwards. We did not begin with barter, discover money, and then suddenly develop credit systems. It happened precisely the other way around. What we now call fake virtual money came first. Coins came much later, and their use spread only unevenly, never completely replacing credit money systems. Surprisingly, barter has mainly been used by people who are used to cash or coin transactions and who temporarily do not have access to currency for one reason or another. Okay, now that we know that the barter story is false, then why do so many orthodox economists continue to tell this barter story despite the evidence? Are they just ignorant or lying? Let's assume the former. 
The barter story is a foundational narrative to rationalize our economic system. It seeks to explain money and markets as a spontaneous horizontal phenomena rather than a social construct regulated by governing authorities that could be subject to change depending on that governing authority. This false story of money makes it easier to perpetuate the myth that governments have to rely on taxpayer money in order to spend on goods and services, because it depicts money as a scarce resource that can exist independently of the state. The barter story is also central to the myth of free markets. By assuming that money arose completely independently from states, we can assume that a world of free markets, completely independent of the state, is possible. But in reality, the dichotomy between states and markets is a false one. Anthropological and historical evidence shows that states create markets, and markets require states. Markets could not continue without states, at least not in any of the forms that we would recognize today. Anyway, the subjects of markets and states is an even more complex topic that we simply do not have time for in this video. But I hope you learned something from this one. And if you did, definitely share it with anybody who you think would benefit from this information. And speaking of money, I need some of it in order to keep this channel going. We need your help. The algorithm does not promote educational political content and instead just floods people with superfluous drama content and useless spectacle. If you have money to give to corporate giants like Netflix, then why not help support some of your favorite content creators if you get value out of them? Special thanks to all of my lovely patrons who support the channel. Special shout out to Butters, Noam Chomsky, Jessica C, JAlphabet89, Michael Porter, Grau13, Demonic Treehugger, and Andrew. And all of the rest of the lovely people on the screen. And if you enjoy this content, definitely check out my second channel, One Dime Radio. I run a podcast available on Spotify, Apple, and YouTube. You can find it in the description. Check it out if you want to learn more about the history of money and how the world works. See you next video.